guys and welcome to The Chic Life where we talk about overcoming your negative mindset so you can manifest your dream life. Today I want to talk about five signs that you are actually living on autopilot and how to get out of it and live life on your terms. So basically a lot of us are actually living on autopilot and we don't even realize it. Have you ever been driving and then realized that instead of going to the place you were supposed to be going, you went onto some familiar path and you just weren't even paying really attention to which way you were going and you took maybe the path to the apartment where you used to live or the way to your old job and you're not where you intended to be. Living in autopilot is kind of like that. We start going through the motions going down old familiar paths and doing things that are not taking us to our intended destination. Personally, living on autopilot really helped keep me stuck and made me have more clouded mindset to where I didn't even realize that I wasn't living life the way I wanted to. And it wasn't until I woke up from autopilot that I really started being able to harness my mindset and tap into manifestation and the woo to really start getting my life on track and doing things that actually make me feel happy and fulfilled. The first step to getting out of autopilot is really just being aware that you even are in autopilot. So let's talk about five signs that you're living on autopilot and what you can do about it to get to your true version of happiness. Sign number one, you are not happy and you really don't even know why. This is probably happening because you're actually living someone else's version of happiness. Martha Beck in her book, Finding Your Own North Star, talks about how we have an essential self and a social self. So the essential self is your true self. It knows what in your heart you really want. And then there's a social self that you learn to become over time to meet society's standards, to make other people around you feel comfortable or to gain the approval of others. We'll talk more about doing things that aren't really true to yourself in just a minute. But basically you may be successful, but ultimately you don't feel fulfilled. You are probably not listening to your heart and intuition and this may be something that you've been trained from a young age to do. So for example, you may be working a stable job, but you are bored out of your mind and you're really unsatisfied with it. If you really took the time to do some work to think about what you're passionate about and where your values are, you may find that you actually have a passion for creativity and one of your highest values may be for making impact on others. So if you're working a nine to five and you're doing paper pushing, mindless work, meeting minutes, that kind of thing, basically like a lot of repetitive work, you are not tapping into your creativity and if you're just staring at a computer screen from nine to five, you're not really impacting others either. But if you had been trained from a young age to seek stability, you may be thinking, oh, I'm successful, I have my stable job, but in your heart, you are not using your own gifts. And this is going to make you successful while not really being satisfied with what you're doing with your time or how you're living your life. So what you wanna do here is just start becoming aware. Start paying attention to what makes you feel good and what makes you feel bad during the day. You may be surprised that some of the stuff that is making you successful doesn't actually make you feel good and vice versa, things that make you feel good may not be things that are aligned with your own version of your definition of successful. That may be because your definition of successful came from someone else. So I've actually created a one pager, it's called the Daily Intuitive Energy Assessment because basically your feelings of happiness and sadness, your feelings of feeling high and feeling low are directly related to your energy. So I call it an energy assessment, but it's also a way for you to intuitively figure out what's going on in your day that's causing you to feel good or bad. So you can get the link to this one pager so you can print it out. And the link for that will be in the description box below, but I recommend printing this out, do one per day. And then as your day goes through, when something happens that makes you feel lower vibe, you can either mark an X down there and then just do X's in the different sections of the paper corresponding to how you feel good or bad throughout the day. And then take a look at that at the end of the day and see where most of your X's are landing. They may all be in the lower vibe state, which might make you feel like, oh no, like I'm actually not feeling as good, but at least you're starting to understand why. If you really want to get detailed, instead of putting an X, you can write a little note about what it was. And then you can start getting an idea of what's happening in your day that's making you feel low and what's in your day that's making you feel high. And then try to do more of the high vibe stuff and less of the low vibe stuff. So you start feeling better, tapping into your own intuition and being more aware of what's going on in your day. 
Sign number two, you don't really know why you're doing, thinking, or choosing the things that you do. If you think about it, uh, I know for me, before I woke up out of autopilot, I was going through the motions, doing a lot of things, but I wasn't putting a lot of thought into it. So whether you're going through the motions of things like habits or routines that you've set up for yourself a long time ago that now you just follow, but you don't really remember why and they don't maybe make you feel that great, or if you're going through a series of habits that someone else has trained you to do, this may, may leave you feeling dull and kind of empty inside because you're not really doing things that actually make you happy. For example, if you like to host fancy dinner parties, kind of formal things where people dress up, you've got like really nicely cooked food and you've got your like tapered candles and whatever, but every time you do it, you get really stressed out. And not only that, even when you execute it perfectly, you're still not happy with it. You don't really feel fulfilled by your own success of your party. If you really look within yourself, you may actually find that you'd rather do a PJ potluck party. You just want to have fun with your friends. You want it to be casual. You want it to be relaxed, but you may not be wanting to host that kind of party because like in your gut, something is telling you, oh no, I can't do that, it's not proper enough, or it's not going to impress anybody. You're like going off of things that don't really have anything to do with your own happiness. Like who cares if it impresses anybody if it's not making you happy? So as you go through your week and you do certain things, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Do you feel like you're actually like just going through some sort of autopilot thing? Or can you like stop and say, wait a second, is there a good reason that I'm doing this? Am I doing this because it actually makes me happy? Or am I doing this because five years ago, I thought this was some definition of success because of some magazine I read or whatever. When you start paying attention to why you're doing what you're doing and take a minute to stop and ask, you really start getting more in touch with yourself and you can start making choices for things that are going to give you a more meaningful and happy life. So the third sign is when you are successful and reach goals, but you still don't feel satisfied. This is similar to number one, except number one is a bit more a general feeling of unhappiness and kind of just not really knowing where to start. Hopefully that daily intuitive energy assessment will give you a good idea of things to start looking into more. In terms of more individual assessment, especially around success and goals, this is like if you were working hard for a promotion and you finally reached it, you got a big office, you got big windows, you have fancy office furniture, maybe you even got a secretary or whatever, but you still aren't feeling satisfied at work. You may be setting your goals and have a definition of success that's based on someone else's ideas. So it could be from your parents, it could be from society, it could be from friends, from schools, from teachers, from whatever. It's not coming from you because when you reach your own goals and successes, it makes you feel really good, you light up. So for this one, what I want you to do is pay really close attention to when you are me meeting these goals and reaching levels of success, how it actually makes you feel. And then also pay attention to, regardless of whether or not it's a success metric you've set for yourself or a goal you've been trying to reach, pay attention to throughout the day when you actually feel successful. What is it about the thing that makes you actually feel successful? I know for me, as an IT consultant, I was always trying to impress my clients, trying to do a good job, and even when I got accolades from them, I still didn't feel that great about it. Whereas when I would do a blog post and then a reader would tell me that it really helped them with something with their family, that made me feel so good. That was part of how I was able to realize that I actually have a really strong value for impacting others. And what you can also do for this is also do some journaling and start writing down some things that you're noticing and how you really feel about it and try to really listen to your intuition and to yourself and not write down the superficial answer or what you think someone wants you to say. This is your journal, this is your private journal. So you can be really honest with yourself. A lot of times when we get into autopilot, it's because we're not really being honest with ourselves. And I know I'm very guilty of this myself. Tapping into my own intuition is something I'm consistently trying to work on as well. So for the fourth sign, you don't actually know what makes you happy. A lot of times when we're on autopilot, we're going through the motions and a lot of things aren't even really making us feel happy at all. In fact, some of it either makes us feel bad or we could even be completely numb and neutral to, to things. 
Oftentimes, especially when we are unhappy, it's really easy to double down on our unha unhappiness. We can really easily complain about things. We can point out, this is the reason why I'm unhappy, this is bad, and this makes me feel bad. But instead of doing that, which is really just kind of keeping you stuck, focusing on that negative energy, what if you tried to focus on what would make you feel better? What would make you feel happy? I know for me, this is actually a really challenging exercise. And there was a time when I realized that I wasn't doing anything to make myself happy. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna make a list and I'm gonna write down all the things that make me happy. And I drew a complete blank. I was so out of touch with myself. I had been working so hard to meet other people's definitions of success that I didn't even know what made myself happy anymore. And so it took me a while to get a list started, but this is actually something I do with all of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. I have them do what's called a spark list. And so what I noticed for myself and what I ask for my clients to do is really try to pay attention to things that you notice throughout the day that make you feel really happy because when we're out of touch with our intuition, this can actually be surprisingly difficult. And so if you're already in touch, please give the others of us grace because sometimes this can be surprisingly hard, but what I've noticed is sometimes when I see some, someone else doing something, I'll feel like a little tug at my heart. And so this isn't a comparison game. This isn't trying to keep up with the Joneses, but sometimes you may not you know, even think about something like maybe you see someone flying a kite and you haven't flown a kite since you were a kid. So you're not gonna think about flying a kite, but seeing someone else do it kind of reignites that memory and there's a little like tug at your heart. I call these little heart tugs sparks. So when you have memories of things, you see things, you're aware of things and you feel that little tug, that's what I call a spark and that's a good thing. That's something inside of you saying, hey, I like that. And so when you find these things as you're discovering them, or if you're able to do it without even having to go through an exercise of trying to wait for that feeling, make yourself a spark list of all the things that make you happy. And this is a really important list to keep handy, especially if you've gotten really out of touch with yourself. Also consider this a living list, so don't be afraid to just keep adding to it or taking things away from it if you find that something you thought made you happy either no longer makes you happy or maybe you were mistaken. This is like a really, should be a fun exercise. And so try to not also be too judgy with yourself. Like say you wanna fly a kite. Who cares if that's not mature or whatever? If it makes you feel good, it makes you feel good. I think a lot of the reasons that we get into autopilot is because we're trying so hard to impress society and the people around us that we lose touch with what makes us actually happy. And so who cares? Do you, what would you rather have? Would you rather have society be impressed with you or do you wanna make yourself happy? So the fifth sign is that you have low energy. So when you're on autopilot, like I was mentioning earlier, you may be going throughout your day and you may not be doing things that are either high vibe or low vibe. You may be completely neutral and this may really make you just feel kind of numb, like almost like nothing's really making you feel good or bad. So that can sometimes be a unhappy place to be even if you feel more numb than unhappy. When you're feeling numb, this isn't really living anymore. You're really just existing. And do you wanna live a life where you just existed for several years or do you wanna live a life where you really lived it? I know I spent several years just kind of going through the motions and going about my day and completely being on autopilot and it is not a fun place to be. And I look back at some of the years of my life and I'm like, what did I even do during this time? Like nothing really stands out to me as being fun, happy, accomplishments. It feels kind of like a waste of my life and I don't want that for you. So you've got to wake up. You've got to get out of this autopilot. Do it for yourself, do it for your happiness. Happiness is not a destination. You can make yourself happy in the now, even if you aren't where you ultimately wanna be. And the best way you can do this is take your spark list from step four and start actually doing things on the list that make you happy. You can make time in your day. It's important to make time in your day to do things that make you happy. So they don't have to be big things. I'm not saying every day you should hike for three hours if you're an avid hiker, but you can do little things to make yourself happy for sure. Cook yourself a nice meal, go watch a movie, have a massage, take a bath, read a book for 30 minutes. They don't have to be complicated things. And remember, you wanna look for reasons that you can do it. You wanna give yourself that happy life. It's not gonna to come to you naturally. You're gonna to have to make some changes because if you're not happy with the way you're living now, doing the same thing is gonna keep you feeling the same way. So if you wanna feel different, you're gonna to have to do some different things. And to me, pulling things off of the spark list is a super easy and fun way to do that. It may take you a while to build up your spark list, but 
you can do it. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications because I'm gonna have a video coming out very soon about the number one thing blocking your manifestation. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and be sure to get your free download using the link in the description box below. I really appreciate you checking out this video and I hope you did enjoy it. Other than that, I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye.